Hello everyone, Denny here. I am currently not in a Disney park, nor in a Disney resort. I am not on Disney property, although I am close. I'm here in my kitchen. In this episode, we are going to work up a little Disney snack magic in the comfort of our own kitchens. It's going to be a really good thing. We are going to use as our guiding light, Eat Like Walt by Marcy Carriker Smothers. We're going to take a look at this book before we get started because literally if you are a Disney Parks fan, a Disneyland fan, a Walt Disney The Man fan, look at all this rhyming I'm doing, you're going to love this book. It's so good and it's so full of stories about Walt Disney, Disney company history, Disney studios, and it's got some pretty amazing recipes inside, including some from the Disney family. Themselves. So I poured myself a cup of coffee because here we are on a Saturday morning and we're still <laughs> still trying to wake up and we're getting ready to put a recipe together. Now, the beauty of this recipe, well, there's so much beauty about this recipe, but the beauty, one of the things about this recipe that appeals to me is the fact that it's super easy to make because, see, when I was on the team at the Diz, um, I had a Saturday Snacks article series. If you ever read any of the Saturday Snacks articles, thank you. Um, this, <laughs> I'm toasting you with my cup of coffee. Thank you so much for reading. Um, I did a hundred, one hundred Disney snacks right here in the comfort of my very own kitchen. I recreated them. I used official Disney recipes. There are amazing fan-made copycat recipes for a lot of our favorite Disney snacks. And those recipes are amazing, but for, you know, for use in this article series, I stuck with what Disney had officially put out. This is one of those because this recipe for soft gingerbread, just stop for a minute, <laughs> with those two words, soft gingerbread um this recipe comes straight from the disney family themselves this book ain't like walt i cannot recommend it more highly it is wonderful from the vintage um pictures of disneyland and walt himself i mean my goodness shouldn't we all go to the disney parks dressed like this I gotta get my pearls and my heels out. And uh, <laughs> I've done it for Dapper Day before. Don't think I'll do it again. I will, I will. Um, but there are just amazing, amazing stories of how Walt's passion for food translated not only into what he asked for as, you know, as a member of a family, he, uh, you know, for what he asked to be offered at the, at the Disney Studios, and then ultimately in his theme park in Disneyland. Just the most amazing stuff in this book. I mean, my goodness. And it's broken down by land. There's Frontier, Frontier Land. Amazing. And then in the very back, you have a collection of recipes. Recipes from the Disney family, recipes from Disneyland, and recipes from the Disney Studios. And today's recipe is just that. It's, it's Walt's Soft Gingerbread. And with you and I coming up, you know, we're in the autumn season now, and we're coming up to the holidays here. What's better on a weekend morning than soft gingerbread? The smell of gingerbread baking in the oven. Yes, please. I have my own personal story about a little bit of gingerbread, so let's talk. When I was a little girl, on certain Saturday mornings, my parents would take a little box of spice cake mix or gingerbread mix out of the pantry to bake for breakfast. Yes, we had cake for breakfast sometimes when I was a kid on the weekend, and how amazing it was. It was Martha Washington brand, bless Martha, and her cake mixes because I enjoyed them greatly. I think they were like 25 cents um, each. You'd find them up on the highest, you know, <laughs> the highest shelf in the grocery store. 
but um, mom would take those mixes out of the pantry and uh, would butter and flour an eight inch round pig pan, dump that mix in after she had added probably oil and, and water and maybe an egg to it. And lo and behold, we would have gingerbread or, you know, or freshly baked spice cake out of the oven. We would all have a slice. You don't need any icing um, at all for these cakes. And it was just the most warm, simple, lovely thing. And it's something that, I mean, here I am as an adult wanting the same thing on a weekend morning, just a little something warm and yummy coming out of the oven. And this is exactly what this recipe is. Marcy lets us know right off the bat of the, uh, in the recipe that it's not a pie because Walt liked his pies. It's not a pie, but this is a treat that Walt enjoyed. And the recipe is dated March 28th, 1934. March 28th, 1934. Simply amazing. Let's head over to the back counter and take a look at our ingredients. Before we get started, we're gonna have a, a sip of our cup of coffee because while um, it is an easy recipe, it is also a Saturday morning, so we need all the fortitude we can get. Now, because I like to fancy myself someone who has a cooking show, I have already completed a couple of the steps to help move us along in the preparation of the recipe. Let's go over the recipe itself, and then I'll let you know where we're catching up now, what I've already done ahead of time. So, Marcy tells us that the recipe serves nine. We're going to butter and flour on an eight by eight baking pan. That's just taking a pat of butter, rubbing the inside and bottom of that pan and tossing in maybe an eighth of a cup of flour and shaking that flour around and, and hit the outside of the pan to make sure all the loose flour gets to where it needs to get and all the surfaces that are coated in butter will actually grab onto that flour. And by buttering and flouring our pan, that gingerbread is going to release from the pan so much more easily than if we skipped that step altogether. So please don't skip that step. I have already done that step here. I always do this over the sink because it's Saturday morning and I just don't need another mess to clean up. I've got enough messes of my own. And so the loose flour, I kind of hit the outside of the pan, loose flour goes into the sink, and then we're all happy campers. Um, our next thing that we need in the recipe, we need one teaspoon of baking soda, three quarters of a cup of hot water, a quarter cup of butter at room temp, quarter cup of Crisco at room temp, quarter cup of sugar, one egg, well beaten, and then a cup of molasses with um, and Marcy gives us a little bit of a hint when working with the molasses and measuring it out. And I'm so thankful, so grateful to Marcy for telling us this. She suggests coating the inside of the measuring cup with a little bit of cooking spray. Genius, genius. Uh, next thing we need is two cups of flour sifted. And I'll, I'll show you what I do to sift flour when I don't feel like sifting flour. And then we've got a teaspoon of ginger and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now the steps that I've already done, I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. I've also dissolved the baking soda, that one teaspoon of baking soda into the three quarters of a cup of hot water. That's, that's what we need it to be. And Marcy gives us my two favorite words in all of baking, in all of recipe dumb, set aside. I love those two words like, good job, friend, high five, you've completed a step, now you can move on. So I will set this aside. The next step that we need to do is we need to put our quarter cup of softened butter into the bowl of a mixer or um, just a big mixing bowl with a hand mixer, totally up to you. And then our quarter cup of room temp Crisco goes in there. I just used Grab it real quick. Generic shortening. No big deal if you don't have the brand Crisco lying around the house. And then also a quarter cup of sugar. You want to cream those three ingredients for three minutes. And you want those ingredients to look 
uh, exactly, you know, the consistency of it, exactly like cream. I mean, that's why we call it creaming, right? So um, no granulation going on with the sugar, none of that. Hit the timer for three minutes, take a medium-ish speed and let her run. I have already done this step. I have um, creamy <laughs> shortening butter and sugar. The other steps I've already completed is I've already beaten my egg. It's ready to go, well beaten. And I've measured out my cinnamon and my ginger. They're ready to go. Because again, cooking show, right? This is what the professionals do. I'm pretty sure. All right, moving on, we are gonna add in the next ingredients into this mixing bowl. We're gonna add in the egg. Ooh. Ooh, first things first, and I almost missed it. We've got to scrape the bowl down. Um, I Let me share with you real quick my two of my favorite kitchen utensils. This is an aside, sidebar, little bit of a rabbit we're going to chase. This is an offset spatula. I literally, and it's got, it's got Crisco on it for measuring it out earlier. I talked myself out of getting this countless times in countless Targets and Walmarts and other stores. I saw people using them in recipes and on TV and I thought, oh, that, that looks wonderful. Like I could ice a cake ever so beautifully. I can do a million things. I finally <laughs> treated myself. We're talking a handful of dollars for this thing, friends, but darn if I didn't talk myself out of it like 300 times. If you're doing the same thing, get that thing because it will literally improve. It will, it will improve your baking. It'll make things so much easier. So like from icing cakes in a, in a leveled fashion, which that's a good thing, to scraping things out of measuring cups. Like this is, this is my friend and I'm so glad that I bought it. This is my other friend. It literally looks like it's been gnawed on by squirrels and that's okay. <laughs> it's a Williams Sonoma a uh, spatula scooper scraper thing, and I've had it these many, many years, and it's lime green, so it makes me very happy. But this is what I like to use to, to get everything down, scrape the sides of a bowl. So here we go. We're just gonna make sure everything is off the sides. Uh, and it's gonna fly out onto my counter, and that's okay, that's okay. I'm not stressing, it's the weekend, right? So here we go. Let's toss in our egg, well-beaten egg. In you go. Take this beater off and get this out of my way for a second. Uh-huh. In the egg it goes. The molasses, we're gonna do Marcy's trick with the molasses and we are gonna spray down our measuring cup with a little oil. Fabulous. And let's get our molasses jar open. And I don't know about you, but an entire cup of molasses is a really, really, really beautiful thing. Perfect. And we're just gonna pour that in. I want the whole, I want the whole jar in. <laughs> and look how it comes out of that measuring scoop. Thank you, Marcy. Whoops, so we are indebted to you, Marcy, for teaching us a new, a new trick. Like almost just on its own, it's all coming out. Normally this would be a mess, a mess, not a mess. It's a lovely thing. I'm going to take my little knife and get the rest of the molasses out of this jar to top off our one cup. And I'm going to add molasses to my grocery list because I need to make some molasses uh, crackle cookies for the holidays. Like that's going to have to happen. So mm -hmm, it'll be added to the grocery list. All right, next thing we need to do, do, do two cups of flour, sift it. So sometimes if I'm feeling up to it, I sift flour. But most of the time, I don't. Even though the recipe may say to sift the flour, I just, I go, yeah, okay. I could sift flour. And if you want to sift flour, more power to you. 
sip that flower. Me, what I enjoy doing, this flower goes out onto my counter. Um, what I really like doing is I take a whisk to the flower. I break up the chunks that you might find in the flower and I call it good enough. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, in fact, I think 10, 10 times out of 10, I've never had it not be enough. So my favorite whisk, another one of my favorite kitchen utensils. Um, I've had it for almost 30 years and it looks like it's brand new. So we're just gonna whisk the flour up and make sure it is nice and broken down and no big chunks going on. And that's gonna be good enough. It's the weekend. Good enough is just that. All right. In that goes all two cups of it. Hi. All right, all two cups in. I'm just going to, I'll stick that there, right? Ginger and cinnamon, so a teaspoon of each. So cinnamon in, ginger in, two incredibly yummy holiday and fall flavors. And when I think of the holidays, I think of fall, I think of those. Like that's, you think of, of fall baking, like, yes, you got to have cinnamon and you got to have ginger. Beater is on the mixer and I'm gonna put on my pouring shield. Now I didn't have it on when I was pouring everything in because I didn't have the beater running. If I was gonna have the beater running while I was pouring in the flour, sometimes a recipe will call for that. You're gonna want this on to begin with. This kind of helps prevent, um, prevent the flour from cascading all over your kitchen counter. You'll still have a little bit of it with this, but it, it'll be better. So we're going to blend until combined. Lowest speed. <laughs> and oh, already it's looking like gingerbread. Already. It's happening. I'm gonna pat down the sides to make sure all of that flour releases. It is all oh, wait until you see this. Oh, look at the gingerbread dough. What? Amazing. Oh, I wish you were here in the kitchen with me because the smell of this amazing gingerbread already, this, this dough, this batter is fantastic. I'm going to scrape down the sides real quick and run it for just another 20 seconds, maybe. I'm going to put the shield back on the bowl because now the water and baking soda mixture that we set aside earlier needs to go in. It's the recipe says add water mixture to batter, beat until smooth about one minute. So we're going to pour this in. Off it goes. And we're going to. Oh! <laughs> yeah. All right. So I have a small mess to clean up. Okay. I'm gonna let that run for the minute like the recipe asks for. And next time I will slowly pour in the water through the shield, the pouring shield, while the beater is running. But it's okay. It's a quick wipe up of the counter. I'm just gonna tell myself it's worth it because I know it is. The recipe told us to beat it until smooth. Let's see. That's smooth. <laughs> that looks so good. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm gonna scrape down the beater. And if you were like me as a kid, this is all you wanted. Like, please just give me the beater. If you're making icing or cake or brownies, it really doesn't matter. Just give me the beater. Take our eight by eight inch greased and flour pan and we pour in the batter. Get it all out of that bowl. Do you see how easy this has come together? I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ingredients. That's it. And there's nothing like obscure about these ingredients. 
You want to pick up a jar of molasses and a thing of shortening. And pretty much everything else you might already have on hand. Or you might already have molasses on hand, like I did. Because I love molasses. All right, we're going to smooth this out. I can do this with my offset spatula if I want to, but this batter is really smooth and creamy and is moving around beautifully. So I'm just going to do it with the back of my scraper. And yes, now while we've got raw egg going on in this batter, uh, and <laughs> officially we have to say you probably shouldn't uh, lick the scraper, you do you, all right? Here we go. This is going to go in a 350 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes. So I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. Insert a toothpick. You want that toothpick inserted in the center to come out clean. If it doesn't come out clean at 20 minutes, I'll put it back in at five minute increments. And I'll see you back here with fresh baked soft gingerbread. Thanks to Walt Disney and Marcy Carriker's mothers. The magic moment is here. 20 minutes is up. I have my toothpick so that we can insert it into the center of the gingerbread. Let me take a look, see what we've got. Oh, it's lovely, but you can tell. I mean, look at that. And I wish you could smell my kitchen, but it's still, the center of it is super jiggly. Got my trivet here. I'm going to put it in. Okay, it's a little slimy. <laughs> Back in it goes. Five. It's that time again. Five minutes has gone by and let me check and see what I've got going on in the oven here. All right, it's less jiggly, but it's still jiggly. So let me take a clean clean toothpick. We've got even more. Yum. On the toothpick. So back in the oven it goes. Five more. Friends, a full 30 minutes has passed and this gingerbread has been doing its thing in a 350 degree oven. And as you can see, very much less jiggly in the middle. But we still have to do the toothpick in the center of the gingerbread test. So fresh uh, toothpick. Still comes out with just a little bit. The very, very center, I think is the issue. I'm going to put it back in for two minutes, maybe three. And we'll see. The additional three minutes is up. And friends, we are moving on. <laughs> and I have a feeling this soft gingerbread is going to be perfect. Here we go. Yep. That center, not jiggly. Perfectly set, it looks like. Smelling so good. Slightly cracked around the outside. Clean toothpick in the middle. That's clean enough. Now all we need to do is let it cool and then we're going to cut it into nine slices. So I've got my baking rack here, my cooling rack. It's going to sit here until it's nice and cool and I'll check back in with you when it's time to enjoy well soft gingerbread. I'm happy to say time is up. We've got a lovely cool cool adjacent <laughs> gingerbread. It's still warm, but my patience has run out. I mean, there's only so much patience we have here, even on a weekend. Okay. So I have my cake cutter and I am going to cut it into nine pieces as the Disney family recipe asks. Let me back it up here so you can kind of see it on camera just a little bit. Oh, it is cutting so beautifully, so easily. <laughs> Amazing. And let me see if I can get one piece 
out of the pan. Oh, friends. Look at that soft gingerbread. Oh, just delightful. What do you think? <laughs> and really, on a Saturday morning, what else is there for us to do at this point than have a taste of Walt's soft gingerbread, a personal favorite of Walt Disney's, what? And a lovely cup of coffee. Here we go. Nice big bite. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> the piece rolled right off onto the counter. <laughs> After waiting this long, I can't even have a bite of soft gingerbread. Bless its heart. Here we go. That is so good. It um it has a with the molasses, it has that bit of a bite to it that you like, that you want, right? With molasses, it's just, mm. it's not an overly sweet cake. It's just not, it's lovely. The consistency of it is just lovely. It's kind of toasted on the top. It's um, warm, like the flavor is warm. It's those spices that we used. It's the molasses. It's just overall lovely. Could you drizzle um, a little confection of sugar glaze over top? Sure. You could absolutely do that. Those are really, really easy to make. A little water, confection of sugar, a little vanilla, and you've got a glaze that you could drizzle over top the entire thing. But really and truly, it's perfect as is. And yes, sweet things have their place. And this is sweet as well. Remember that quarter cup of sugar that we threw in there? But man, it's, I think it appeals to just about everyone in the family. I mean, if you don't like gingerbread, that's one thing. But if you do, I think this is going to make you very happy. Let me know down in the comments section what Disney snacks you are planning to make this holiday season. I would love to add some more things to my list of, of what I want to bake right alongside you. What traditions did you have as a kid? Let me know down in the comments section below. Like, did you, every Saturday morning, did you eat, you know, whatever? Let me know. Let me know what your favorite thing to eat for breakfast as a kid was. Let me know if you've read Eat Like Walt. If you haven't, put it on your holiday gift list. Like, if you are making your list and checking it twice, if you're a Disney fan, history fan, Walt Disney fan, Disneyland fan, food fan, this is a lovely, lovely book to put on your list. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this at all, hit that like button, please. Give me a thumbs up. I would love that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would ask you to consider doing that as well. And hit the notification bell so that you'll get the heads up every time I upload a new video. Also, consider sharing this video with a friend. Maybe a friend who likes gingerbread and Walt Disney. <laughs> I have a feeling they'll enjoy it. For fun between the videos, follow me on Instagram at Denny underscore Sunderly. That's D-E-N-I underscore S-U-N-D-E-R-L-Y. Thanks so much, friends, for stopping by and for spending some time with me. Your time is very precious, and I'm so thankful that we got to hang out together today. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to eat my gingerbread now. <laughs> <laughs>